Hello Internet, welcome back to Cataclysm, our tutorial series. Um, in this episode, so we're tired, but we're going to continue doing some vehicle work and things. Uh, last episode, we talked about vehicles in specifics. Uh, in this episode, we want to, basically for us to drive this vehicle, there are two main things that I would need to feel comfortable. Number one, we're going to need more diesel fuel. And number two, we're going to need um, tires. So I would like more diesel. Our car battery is getting to the point where it's going to stop starting the vehicle. So we really need to run this a little bit to build up some battery charge. Problem is we don't have a lot of fuel. Now we could run on 2.9 liters for a little while, but I would really like to source a little bit more diesel. So I thought we would look around for some diesel vehicles. Now in order to siphon fuel, let's, um, ah, we don't need to head back to base. We can find some stuff out here. Oh, are you leather? Trench coat, nope, just cotton, always cotton. Um, so in order to siphon fuel, you need two things. Giant cockroach, I thought we murdered all of you. Well, I was going to try to close the door so we didn't have to deal with them, but too late now. Okay, looks like there's some roach filth up here as well. So you need two things. You need a rubber hose and you need a container. Here is a container. In fact, there's two containers. Let's just dump this ammonia. I don't really care. Just go ahead and dump it on the ground. Doesn't matter. So now we have a gallon jug that we can fill with fuel. Secondarily, we need something to siphon the tank. And in order to get that, we generally are looking for a uh, rubber hose. If you, no, don't wield, don't, what? Don't do that. Uh, generally, the way to do this is to get a refrigerator and smash. You're not damaging the fridge. Oh, because we only have a bash of like five. Yeah, okay. Um, give me, uh, I don't have anything good to smash with. Give me a plank. I don't think that'll be strong enough either. We'll try. Go ahead and smash this. You hear clang? There we go. So we smashed the fridge. Give me my stamina back, please. And we got a rubber hose out of it. So we're going to take that and we're going to use that to siphon fuel from the vehicle. Go back to the spear. Drop the old planks. We don't need those. Problem is, um, diesel is not super common. Gasoline is, is considerably more common because most vehicles are gasoline and most uh, gas stations have more gasoline pumps than they have diesel pumps. So in general, diesel is a lot harder to find. But diesel uh your fuel type is determined by the engine you have so in order to switch to a gasoline vehicle we would have to remove the engine in its entirety that would require us to make a crane it would require us to find a powerful gasoline engine because this is a 4.5 liter v8 um, this is obviously strong enough to move the vehicle because it's very heavy and if we went over like let's say we went back to base and we grabbed a um an engine out of that little car we found that's not powerful enough to actually move that vehicle because it's so big so we're looking for a diesel vehicle mostly it's big trucks this is probably not this is gas this is surely gas ambulance is gas uh you'll see the gasoline is much more common what are you you look like oh you're a wreck i was gonna say you look like a big vehicle you might have diesel but no so all this is gasoline. Now we did see a security truck earlier. Sometimes I think those are diesel. Maybe I'm misremembering, but we're gonna go take a look at that. Uh, and we're just gonna keep our eyes open. I think fire trucks are diesel. What's over there moving so, oh, it's a rabbit. It was moving very quickly. It scared me a little bit. So you're not gonna be diesel. You're not gonna be diesel. What are you up here? Oh, you're probably not, but we'll take a look. There's some zombies up here. I don't really want to deal with. Uh, nope, you're gas. So you'll see, of all the vehicles we found, we could have found uh, quite a lot of gasoline. A lot of times I will take diesel engines out of a vehicle and replace it with a gasoline engine. Uh, people tell me that I'm dumb for doing that and that I should just deal with it because diesel isn't like super rare. It is findable. Um, I just really do prefer having fuel everywhere, essentially. Okay, you clear out some of these monsters. Again, we have a very good spear now, so there's really not much to be afraid of. We deal a lot of damage, and they're relatively weak. A little worried about the dog, but should be fine. I thought we cleared this area in its entirety. So I'm a little surprised there are some zombies hanging out back here. Yeah, you'll see we're one-shotting some things. Hearing some noise in that house, but that's not a big deal. Oh, they were dead but never pulped. It's possible we forgot to pulp a few. 
and that they resurrected. This headless is just your joke, my friend. This is not a diesel vehicle, unfortunately. Gasoline. Okay. Uh, if we don't find any soon, I probably will just change the engine. I know it's like a lot of work for something that's relatively not a big deal. And I probably should just keep it as diesel, but I'd rather just uh, have an easy time of this. Plus, if we find... Oh, you're probably diesel. It is. Okay, so we come to this menu. We can siphon a few different ways. We can activate our rubber hose and uh, it will prompt us on the vehicle. It actually auto-selected the, the vehicle it used to prompt you. We could select a tank and then uh, pour it into a container. Alternatively, we can go into the vehicle menu, hit the S key for siphon, siphon a particular tank, and pour it into our gallon jug. We pour it into the gallon jug, we pour it into the gallon jug. So there's, uh, we used all the diesel, uh, but there's still room in our jug, so we'll siphon some more, pour in a container, and you'll see it says there's some left over. Anytime you get that message, it means you were not able to empty the tank. So, oh, more Zambies. Let's deal with them here. Yeah, I guess we forgot to pulp some. I probably did kill a bunch over here and then walk away without pulping them. So, it is what it is. Anyway, we found some fuel. So, let's head back and uh, get that set up. What is this? Oh, that's the um, survival toolkit thing that we took apart. So you'll see it took us a little while to find diesel. I'm actually surprised we found any at all. We will come into this menu and we will hit F to refill the engine. Go ahead and dump our gallon in there. You'll see we just tripled the amount of fuel that we had. And we'll head back and we'll, we'll take the remainder of that diesel fuel again. Every drop is a little bit precious when it's a diesel engine. So I don't really have a problem walking all the way back out here to get this last little bit. Pour into the gallon jug. There we fully emptied the tank. Um, why don't we look around a little bit more? Maybe we can find something else. Are you... Oh, I thought you were a soldier zombie for a second. You'll see our uh, spear is not getting damaged, which is great. And uh, we're putting things down pretty easily. Uh, what is this in the road? Oh, you're a very big truck. I bet you're diesel. Oh, it's just a trailer. Never mind. If there's a truck in front of it, that might be diesel. Quite a big horde out here. They must have chased the fox out here, which is pretty messed up. Uh, I don't see anything nearby that they would have come from. I guess the railroad station. Let's see how many are over here. Quite a lot. Some of which have seen me. Doesn't look like there's a truck on the front of this. So there's really no reason for us to come down here. We're just going to back up. Some of them are going to follow us. Some of them will hit the trailer and it won't won't uh they won't track all the way up here but there's no reason for us to go down here again we found another light battery um, actually it's a high capacity light battery so it has an even higher charge let's just shop around maybe we can get eyes on another diesel vehicle tons of zombies up there let me guess you're a park or something oh it's the baseball field yeah again i think that this is probably like a cute idea for the baseball field but I feel like it's just going to have tons of monsters and no value. So I don't think we're going to go up there. Uh, I was going to say we'll try to peek around the corner. But it looks like there's quite a few zombies here. Zombie dog's a little annoying. Because they're uh, a little hard to hit sometimes. Yeah, let's uh, back up. I would feel better if the dog died. There we go. These guys should be no problem. We might get some stuff coming from the north, but we know it's pretty safe behind us. So we know we can retreat if we have to. Let's uh, stop running. Have they seen me? Yeah, again, just the location where it's obvious that they dumped a bunch of uh, a bunch of enemies. Here we see a thorny shambler. They shoot at you. I'm not sure what exactly the darts do, but we really no reason for us to go up there. Unfortunately, a lot of locations in Cataclysm are like that, where there's a lot of enemy density, but there's really not a lot of value in going to that place. Um, hospitals are like that. I p see people all the time who are like, I'm going to go loot a hospital. And I just always am like, why? Don't do that. There's like, so, there's like, literally in a hospital, there's like 80 to 100 zombies. It's a really crazy number. 
Um, and there's nothing there that you can't get somewhere else for a lot less work. Um, and the hospital is a, a location I'm willing to forgive because it's like it's an apocalypse. People would go to the hospital. A lot of people would die in the hospital. So it makes sense. There's a lot of zombies there. But a lot of other places, it doesn't make sense. Like, again, why? Look, it's a, it's a, it's a baseball diamond. Why are there like 12 zombies just chilling in here? Why would people have come out to the baseball diamond and died here? It just doesn't really make sense. And uh, I feel like a lot of people, I don't know if that's like a development direction that I maybe just don't agree with or don't understand, but I see locations all the time where they're like, yeah, let's just dump a bunch of monsters here. And I just don't get it. I don't, it, it to me doesn't expand the game in any way because it's not fun to sit and clear out 15 zombies for no reward at all. And odds are good. We only saw a small percentage of them. Oh, you're definitely diesel. Oh, I would like that very much. And in fact, the external tanks could have a lot of diesel in them. So we definitely want to come up here now, which is frustrating. Because, uh, again, we've only seen this little section and there were so many zombies. I'm willing to bet in the entirety of the baseball diamond, it's probably like it's probably like 50 zombies. And I really just... Uh, it's just annoying. It's just annoying and it doesn't make sense. Got some meth here. So let's stop pushing this direction, unless you're something good. You're not. You're a little drone vehicle. It's a street sweeper. Um, they have some stuff, like in the early game, if you're looking for a fire starting source. Like, just look at how many zombies there are. Why? I don't understand why they do this. Look at this. Look at this nonsense. So they've started to see me. They're going to break through. So let's uh, start retreating. Uh, and lead them down and we'll get them um, so this is a viable strategy when you see a lot of enemies like that if you move away from them they will end up trickling a little bit at a time because they all have different speed values so some of them will get to you very quickly some of them will take a really long time to get to you some of them will get distracted by other vehicles uh, other buildings and stuff um, some of them as long as you keep retreating some of them might come down around this corner um, but they're not going to come in a giant horde. They're going to come a few at a time. So it's just a, a strategy. Just keep backing up and kind of moving to a safe-ish location. So like here we've cleared out, what, four of them. We can wait and catch our breath without being in danger. Not sure why it didn't prompt me about this fat zombie, but that's okay. We'll just keep clearing things out. We're going to want to go up to that vehicle, both for diesel and because it looks like it has some other valuable vehicle parts. So we'll peek back out. Preferably expose ourselves to a few of them. Have them trickle down and deal with them as well. So, yep, that's the strategy. Just take a few at a time. If we had a firearm with a lot of ammunition, we would just go up there and just shoot them. Um, and stand in the street. Shoot them, and then when they finally broke free, we would either move around so that they were still stuck in the chain link fence. While we took shots at them, or we would just retreat and keep shooting them because we don't have to manage our stamina uh, when we're when we're shooting the enemies we just have to maintain enough distance between them uh, and kill the ones that get really close basically so pretty pretty tedious here to clear them out but also not particularly dangerous or scary my throat's getting a little crackly which is not ideal for commentary we'll go ahead and take that battery as well actually you know we have enough mp3s and uh, light batteries at this point I don't really see a reason to keep taking those. Spear's holding up great. No damage on our spear. You can see that uh, if we had been using our flimsy weapon, we would have, uh, you know, already probably gone through an entire spear trying to deal with this. You'll see they got caught in this house a little bit. Actually, I don't know if that's a house or what, what the deal with that is. It looks like the survivor house, so I'm really hoping it's not because I don't want to deal with another, like, seven survivor zombies. What is this? Taped window. Yeah, it looks like it might have survivors in it. In fact, we see something up here. That's oh, the thorny shambler. Shambling undead human. Like, this is just like um, a shambling mound is what I picture when I see the thorny shambler. But it's supposed to be a zombie, so I think it's a zombie with vegetable matter on it. Um, they shoot at us. Let's see what it does exactly. How far it uh, you know, we should be backing up, actually, because there's quite a lot up here yet. They haven't seen us, but they will eventually. 
Like, look at this. Why? Who made this? Why did you think it was a good idea to dump, like, 40 zombies? We've cleared, like, what, 9 or 10 already. Here's another, like, 12 or 13. There's 3 or 4 in the road. And I know there are more up here. Why, like, why do you think that this is a good idea? Hey, look, I know some of the development team watches my videos. I know some of the contributors watch my videos. If you're making something like this, you can just make the baseball diamond and it would just be a cool, interesting location. You don't have to dump a bunch of zombies on it. Just like that mailman thing. You could have put one dead mailman and put like three zombie dogs and that would have been a cute little thing. But people, I think... I think what happens is that a lot of people who contribute don't play the game enough. And so they don't really understand what normal numbers look like. So he shot us in our torso with a dart and we're poisoned. How often can you shoot? Not very often, apparently. Okay. I mean, he hit us for eight damage, which is a pretty significant hit to our chest. Because um, we have like 90 hit points, 96 apparently. Um, actually not as much as I kind of thought it was. I think, like, uh, people who contribute don't always play the game very much. And so what happens is that, like, where did I... No, hide from the zombies so you can rest. Um, we don't even need to rest anymore. Let's go back up and draw some more of them, I guess. It's like people play the game and they're like, you know, uh, I, they don't have an idea of what normalcy is. It's which what I think is what happened with the vest that I complain about all the time. I think somebody was like, oh yeah, well, it's a vest. It would have a really great protection values. Um, so it is going to be very powerful and it's going to be one of the best armor in the game. Like that's all sensible. You know, real world armors are pretty significant, especially like high tier military stuff. So it's like, you know, I, I understand why you would make that. But then from a balance perspective, if you were going to do that, you have to make it r sufficiently rare enough that it makes sense. You can't just make it, you know, awesome and then appear on every soldier zombie. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't work with the game. This is just ridiculous. I'm so annoyed that these are all here. Because you know what? If we came back here in like a week, a lot of these monsters would be upgraded. This would be a very, very difficult area to clear out because there's so many zombies. I'm just so annoyed by this. And I know I just complained about it couple days ago in the mailman about the mailman thing but like it, it it is a source of frustration for me because i really like cataclysm and some of this stuff really just annoys the bejesus out of me i would love if you guys would come down here because you're not like we could press up and probably get in and pull stuff off of this is this boards are these boards they are boards so we could get up behind it and it would block the view of all these zombies uh, and we could maybe harvest some stuff without them seeing. But if they see us and they come over here, they're going to destroy the vehicle. And we would really like to keep these tanks intact. I mean, they are low-tier zombies. It's just so annoying and tedious to clear out this many zombies. It just annoys me, especially when I'm trying to record, like... This was supposed to be about harvesting fuel and getting... Uh, wheels and it's turned into oh let's kill another 40 zombies because somebody dumped them all in one look all right stop complaining anyway anyway skeletal dog uh is going to be a little resistant to our spear here you'll see we only hit him for seven uh for eight and nine damage by contrast if we hit the regular zombie or we let him bite us on the torso You'll see we hit the zombie for 44 damage. That's because the skeletal dog is pretty resistant to our piercing weapons. Um, and there are skeletal zombies as well. It's not just skeletal dogs. Let's keep pulling them out. Here we have a shriekling. This is the child zombie that shrieks. And again, making noise draws enemies. So we just need to be careful when we engage those. A couple more zombies coming down. We are starting to see a little bit more monster diversity since we're um, progressing in the game a little bit. Okay. Like this hazmat zombie. Hazmat zombies are basically regular zombies. Um, they just are hazmat-y, so they sometimes have radiation medications on them, like the potassium iodide tablets. Um, potassium iodide. Oh, you're a listener. I thought you were a headless zombie. Let's uh, get away from him a little bit. Um, potassium iodide is the one that 
you take before exposure, I think. Taken prior to exposure, yeah. And then the Prussian blue or whatever is for purging rate radiation. So at this point, I'm feeling comfortable-ish enough to go up there and try to mess with the vehicle. Looks like somebody has a gun in their, their little uh, parlor over here. So we'll check that out. Gold hairpin, no thank you. Uh, computer gaming, heavy battery. First one we've seen, so we'll take that. Uh, very large pack in here. Oh, see, this is such garbage. So this is like a, um, I'm guessing a survivor person has stored up materials in their, their, little, their little house here. I don't really get why it's in a town. It's just a house, okay. Problem is it just dumps a bunch of like free, really great stuff. Like the Asapi vest is again, torso protection that is absurdly high. Cannot express to you enough how much I hate these vests and do not want to wear this. But again, tutorial playthrough, you should wear this if you find it. I guess we'll put it on. I'm not happy about it. I don't like this vest. It's ridiculous. 50. So by comparison, if we look at our fur trench coat. It has a protection of 5 and 5. If we look at this vest, oh, it's 50 and 90. So it's 10 times better. And uh, I, I mean, I can't do math. What, 15? No, way more than 15 times better. I can't do math. Don't judge me. Point is, it's absurdly high. And again, it makes perfect sense that a high-quality ballistic vest manufactured by like modern military folks would have an absolutely crazy high protection. I don't have a problem with that. I have a problem with how common they are. They're on basically every soldier zombie. And we literally just broke into a random house and found a fully repaired, perfect condition one just laying there for us to take. And I really hate stuff like that. I don't think that that, I think from a balanced perspective, that's a huge problem. So we'll take it. Definitely take the army helmet because it's better than our hard hat. I don't really want most of this other crap, though. Uh, yeah, I don't see any reason to take most of this. The webbing belt is good. You can clip weapons and stuff to it, uh, I think. Um, combat boots also probably... I don't like boots in the game. I don't really want to wear the boots. Tack gloves are also pretty good. Uh, I prefer if they fit because their encumbrance is a little high, but we'll take those as well. I guess we put on this stupid vest. Because you, you would if you found it, I guess. In my casual Let's Plays, I don't use it. But whatever. Here's a gun. It's a SIG 5.52. It's a very good gun. It's my preferred rifle. Because uh, it's a 5.56 rifle. So it's nice to have one of those. Are these all going to be crazy powerful? Let me out of here. Let's check the other house areas. Because if they're all like this, that's a little ridiculous. Some food. I mean, we'll loot it just because there might be some stuff hidden around here. All these doors are locked. I mean, it's kind of weird that you lock the doors and stuff, but you don't even board up the windows. You just put a little bit of paper over them or a little bit of tape over them. Pretty basic kitchen stuff here. Looking for like real major stores. Pretty good idea to take uh, cough syrup when you find it. Because it's uh, not super common and it's really useful when you get sick. Door is locked. I don't have anything to smash all this stuff down. I really don't feel like smashing a bunch of things. Corpse of a human. Looks like they killed themselves, I guess. Mm, okay. Another corpse of a human. Yeah, I guess they all killed themselves. Weird that none of them have guns or pill bottles or anything near them. You would think if they killed themselves, that would be something you'd find. But that's fine. Um, okay, and there's a fireplace. All right, back to uh, clearing out enemies here. Skeletal dog really wants to come play. So we'll deal with this. Again, uh, he's pretty resistant to piercing. You're really hitting me a lot as well. Ripping my bags. Why, why am I missing every shot? Uh, why, why am I missing so much? Torso encumbrance. Torso. Torso. Uh-huh. Drop my bag. This will take some time and we're going to get hit. But it will enable us to hit him. I don't really understand why 
we missed as much as we did. But you'll see that one enemy really devastated our health, put us up into unmanageable pain. It's frustrating to me that that happened, but it is what it is. What are you going to do? Pick all this back up. Oh, first of all, wear the pack. The reason we dropped the pack is because the pack itself has an encumbrance value that goes on our torso and its encumbrance gets bigger the more stuff that you're carrying. So we were carrying quite a lot of stuff. So um, it would auto drop all this non-important stuff that would free up a lot of our torso encumbrance. You'll see we were down at 10, whereas with everything that we were carrying, uh, we were actually up at, no, pick up everything. We were actually at 31. So it saved us 21% chance of missing. At this point, we took a lot of hits. Our stats really tanked from that pain. And we're going to head back to base. Really? And there's a skeletal dog. Where? I don't want to deal with another one. To my east. Let's get out of here. Because that really tore us up pretty bad. It's frustrating. Uh, for sure. One of the things that was affected by that is the fact that we took off our fur trench coat. And that covered our arms. So currently our arms have no protection at all because we swapped to the vest. We will address that uh, in the future. But for now, let's just fill this tank. Yes. Um, you know what? I'd like to charge this battery a little bit. Because I'm a little nervous at how low the battery charge is. There we go. So we're just going to run this engine for a little while here. And keep an eye on that percentage of... Uh, Battery charge. Now this is of course going to eat up some of our diesel, but it is going to charge the battery, which is uh, pretty important. You'll see again, this is still broken. It says it will take weeks before this uh, runs out, but we're just going to run it a little bit here just for a couple minutes, charge the battery a little bit. Again, as long as you have an alternator on your vehicle, it will uh, charge the battery when the engine is running. So if we look here, we're at 18%. I feel more comfortable with that. Down at 4%, it's possible that we would fail to start it a bunch of times and it would run out of battery charge and not start anymore and we'd have to replace the battery. So we really didn't want to do that. Let's head back to base. Took a real beating from that dog. Uh, we need to get some arm protection if we're going to wear this stupid vest. This was a real complainy episode, huh, Internet? I apologize. I know some of you get real sick of that, but i also think i have perfectly valid complaints i think everything i said i would defend to the end of the world i think are all completely sensible choices that i you know i don't think that i'm making any ridiculous i uh, you know and i'm not like accusing people or trying to be a huge dick or anything um i just think that some people make poor decisions when they implement stuff in the cataclysm and i think the dev team does a great job but there are a lot of prs and so it's really hard to keep track of every little thing and and to think about how everything is going to affect balance it's hard to balance stuff you know i made the headless zombies they're still not balanced they're all a little bit pushovery even the highest tier one is scary don't get me wrong but it's not like it's it's still not really where i'd like it to be balance is hard i get that it's just frustrating when it's like oh well let's make a location that has basically nothing in it maybe some baseball bats, which are pretty valuable, but like literally nothing else really in it. And then let's dump 50 zombies on top of it. Why? You know, I don't get it. I just, I don't understand the logic behind that. Anyway, that's going to do it for this episode. I'm also feeling a little hoarse, so I think I'll call it on these episodes for now. When we come back, uh, we will definitely be addressing our pain, our uh, current hit point situation. Really not interested in having our arms break, so we're going to work on that. We'll probably raise our first aid a little bit since we mostly neglected that. And I will take care of all that in the future. For now, that's going to do it. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the episode. I'll be back with more Cataclysm tutorial content in the near future, and I'll see you next time.